Everyone peace my coming at ya. Over the past several months, several of you have asked me on Discord just generally about Chainsafe as an SDK and how that can be leveraged when it comes to building out play to earn games or Web3 games. So in this video, I just wanted to explain high level what Chainsafe is, how it correlates to the Fused VR APIs, because I see a lot of questions related to that. And and then I'll just give you generally my, my take on the project where it is and where I would hope for it to go. The, the TLDR is that I think what they're doing is great. And if anyone from the Chainsafe team is watching, I'd be open to discussing any form of collaboration that you have in mind. At the end of the day, we're all working towards the same goals of really making gaming and Web3 much more interoperable. And that requires building out the right level of tooling and support necessary to make it as easy as possible to integrate all of these different technologies. With that out of the way, um, why don't I go ahead and switch into desktop view here and we will talk a little bit more about that project. So quickly, when you Google Chainsafe, it's actually more of a company entity that is tackling a lot of really interesting projects in the space. And it's not just focused on the Unity and gaming side, although there is definitely a key portion of their kind of branding that is associated with gaming. But as you can see here, it's an R&D blockchain firm uh, that has been working on quite a lot of different projects. And if we actually just kind of go over to their projects page, you can see a bunch of the different things that they've touched on through and kind of have gotten funding from various different entities to, to make this all happen. I mean, in particular, the fact that they've touched the web3.js framework, I think is really, really important, as well as just kind of supporting a bunch of other different uh, opportunities and research areas in various different domains from chain bridges to a bunch of other stuff that you can just kind of peruse through here. I believe they have their own services as well. And so broadly, again, it's just an R&D approach to the kind of tooling aspect of blockchain in that regard guard gaming kind of comes in as one of those areas where you need an SDK to bridge unity to the blockchain. And that's kind of, from my understanding, it basically kind of came out as a result of kind of one developer who was really interested in the project, reaching out to Chainsafe, they got some funding and kind of made this SDK happen, which is a really, really awesome story in that regard. You can kind of read through what they're looking to do and kind of their aims here from this high level picture. And then they have their own Discord, GitHub and, and Docs page. And I, I would say the Docs are, at least as of the recording now, which is on March 9th, it's, I would say pretty comprehensive of what it can do. They have tons of YouTube videos and documentation associated with various different things. I would say that some of the videos that I've watched, I feel like because this project is continuously changing, um, might be a little about out of date. That's just generally been my take as I've followed this project because I've seen a lot of different things changing, but at least on the March 9th build, which we'll take a look at, it seems to be pretty stable. And specifically, I think this is the, the key area of focus that I, I personally am more interested in and why I've built up the APIs the way I have is primarily for the mobile desktop and VR use cases. This is something that they are looking to tackle with their SDK here. We'll kind of break this down in a little bit more detail as we go throughout this video, but very high level, right? You can use their SDK as a means to try to interact with the blockchain and you can do that through WebGL builds. You can try to do that through mobile and desktop builds. There are a couple of key caveats that I, I should mention is that unlike kind of how we built our APIs out that you have a client talking to a server, talking to a blockchain, there is no server in their SDK. It's really designed for the client to talk directly to the blockchain through a wallet and how you get access to the wallet is what we'll, we'll showcase here. There's really just a client blockchain model to that approach, which I would say comes with its own pros and cons, especially when it comes to a couple of key assumptions that we'll talk about a little bit later. That That's kind of where the, the SDK fits in the ecosystem. And then you can go to their GitHub page and pull the latest Chainsaf SDK from from their releases. You can see here they have a Unity package. You can go ahead and drag and drop into your assets folder for Unity. It's a pretty small package. You can just download it and pull that in. And this is roughly what it'll look like. I guess more accurately, you won't have a scene open. So let me just create a new scene to emulate what you'll basically see when you, you land in here. But you have a few different folders. You have your plugins. Uh, you have kind of a generic sample scene here. And then you have your Web3 Unity package. And then you have WebGL template. So if you're looking at more of a WebGL model, this is probably a good bet for, for taking a look at, but like I mentioned, I'm kind of more interested in the mobile desktop use cases. So you have a bunch of prefabs associated with various different Ethereum standards, right? So you have your ERC20, 721, 11.5, a few different models for interacting with the blockchain. And then you have 
your two different kind of core scenes, if you will. You have the wallet login scene, you have the web login scene, both depending on, again, what, what you're planning to target. So let's take a look at the wallet login scene. It's very simple, very straightforward, and it's really driven by primarily this login button, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there we go. The login script here, and you have this wallet login script, which we can go and take a look at. The SDK is pretty much, as I understand, fully open source. There's no, for the most part, I would say, there's not really a server, technically speaking, that that that, that is kind of used here, although it's a, it's a little abstracted out to some degree. But it's just kind of this login function that triggers once you press this button, and you can choose whether or not to remember an address or not associated with that. Uh, the way it works is, in this case, you're going to be logging in by signing a message, and that message is going to be based on time. So the, that's how they're creating the message, is purely based on time and an expiration date. You'll then go ahead and call their Web3 wallet I'll sign message. And if we actually pull into the sign message, you'll see what's actually really going on behind the scene is in, in this case, they're actually just going to be opening up a URL using application open URL. There are two different URLs depending on what device you're working on. So if you're on Android iOS, you're going to be getting a MetaMask deep link associated with your Chainsafe wallet. And the reason it's a deep link is actually because behind the scenes, what they're going to be doing is using uh, Wallet Connect to actually go ahead and bridge your app to the wallet, specifically MetaMask in this case. And that that will, again, behind the scenes, use Wallet Connect to set up the network interfaces that are necessary between your app and the wallet that's on device and, and bridge everything together. If you're on desktop, it's just gonna go ahead and open up this GitHub page where they have some JavaScript that's running to handle signing a transaction or sending a transaction. That's what's happening behind the scenes here, right? And so you have your send transaction function, you have a sign function, and a lot of this kind of gets abstracted out. And I think the way they've, they've kind of done it is interesting. Well, we'll show some pitfalls based on the comments you might be seeing here uh, in, the, in, in this section, but why don't we go ahead and run it real quick? So that's very high level, right? We have a button, we're gonna click it, if you sign and you've signed it correctly, then it's gonna open up the game scene, whatever that you want to use to go ahead and run. So I'm gonna go ahead and click login. That opens up my default browser, which in this case is Firefox. The only problem is Firefox doesn't have any wallet associated with it. So that there's nothing to really trigger anything in that regard. I actually have to end up going to my Brave browser here, which is where I have my MetaMask instantiated. If I go ahead and that means copy this URL over to Brave, it will trigger all of the necessary things that are necessary, right? So let me go ahead, log into my MetaMask here, should trigger the message that needs to be signed. And it's just based on the URL. So you can actually see here if the action is signed and then there's a message that's running. I'll go ahead, click sign. I'd have to sign it again. The intent is that you copy this. And then if I go back to my app, it should trigger actually signing in. The problem is the way this is implemented, I'm actually not allowed to go ahead and copy anything prior to the signing, the copying of the message itself. And the reason is, is if we actually look at what's happening within the signing function here, it's triggering every hundred milliseconds or so to check if there's anything that's been copied. And so when I actually went ahead and copied this URL and pasted it within Brave, that triggered the app to reject it with a signing error. And the reason it rejected is because the URL that I copied, it's not gonna be able to verify that against the message. And so that that breaks everything. So you, you can see there's a little bit of UI UX wonkiness to this. And it's kind of because of the fact that it's going trying to go through a client to blockchain model, which just in my opinion, doesn't really work. I think if, if you add the APIs that I, I've described in the past several videos to this SDK, I think that's where you might really start to see some synergy. Although again, I will gladly admit there's some pitfalls to that model as well. The, the point being is you, you have client server. And so using the clipboard as kind of an innovative way, I will say to pass messages between a browser and the SDK. But again, like I mentioned, shown here comes with pitfalls. So the way, if we really want to test this out, right, is let me go back here. I'm going to click login you will see that we have the number associated here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste that in, right? So this is 85, 3106. 
right? Just making sure we don't hit copy or paste until it, it warrants us to. So I'm gonna go ahead and now click copy. That should then trigger within Unity to verify that we have done everything we need to successfully. And so that should then trigger if I had anything in my build settings, which I don't, but if I did have anything, we could then go ahead and transition into the login state. It's definitely wonky because of the assumption that everything has to happen within the client. And I think that just goes and speaks to not necessarily anything wrong with what Chainsafe is doing, just kind of the tools that are really needed to move this industry forward because it is really hard to build out all of this infrastructure for play to earn games with a client, a server, a blockchain, and everything in between to prevent cheating of any kind because there's a lot that you do as a game developer that adds more rewards to the ecosystem but might enable more people to cheat. If this was running through, say, WebGL, that's a slightly different model, right? Where you don't really have to worry about any of this copy-pasting, you don't really have to worry about Wallet Connect, you just really simply would go ahead and have your Unity game run as a WebGL build and that can kind of directly talk to, to MetaMask. If you're going that model, might not necessarily be bad to take a look at this here. I think the intent with Chainsafe is fundamentally they're just looking to build out a generic SDK. In that regard, hopefully there are a lot of different models and methodology, right, that you could use to connect your games to the blockchain through this SDK, kind of really depending on what you're looking to build. Hopefully, I think what I've illustrated here shows you how powerful it can be, but also that we have a lot of work to do when it comes to, to UI UX. And so I think as a community, the more people we have building tools and building up this ecosystem is incredibly important, incredibly valuable, and something that we just need to continually iterate on for the next year, two years to really enable anyone and everyone to, to get into the space. Hopefully that helps kind of answer all of those three core pillars broadly. What are my thoughts? What Chainsafe is? And how I eventually hopefully see this working with the APIs is I think the APIs could fit quite nicely into this SDK. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll say if there's anyone from Chainsafe watching who wants to collaborate in some fashion, the door's open. I'll leave that here for now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. This has been Fuse Man and I'm signing out.